I'm currently working on a project where I'm making about a hundred dog collars to donate to an animal charity and I figured while I was doing it I might as well make a little tutorial so you guys can make your own dog collars too. So you only need a few materials to make a dog collar. You're going to need your webbing, um, you're going to need a side release buckle, a tri-glide to make it adjustable. Now if you're doing this for a very specific animal and you don't want to make it adjustable, you don't have to, but I'm going to show you how this works anyway. Um, and then you also need a D-ring to attach the leash or your tags to your collar. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out your webbing. I've been using um, 20 inches for my medium collars and 16 inches for my smalls, but you can do this to any size you want for your pet. Just make sure that you do their measurement for their neck, as well as adding a little bit extra if you're going to make it adjustable. Now after you cut your webbing to keep it from fraying, since most of it is plastic anyway, you can just take a lighter and burn the edges and that will keep them from fraying and then you don't have to fold them over too many times making your item too bulky. So this is how I make an adjustable strap. There's lots of different ways to do it but I find this to be the easiest and the least confusing because there's a lot of looping things over things. So first you're going to take your tri-glide and you're going to put it onto your webbing like so leaving a little bit extra space. Now I'm going to sew in an X right here to make sure that this is really secure. You can just go back and forth a whole bunch of times if you want, but I think the X box makes it look a little bit more professional. Also word to the wise, I'm using a heavyweight needle because I am going to be going through a lot of webbing. So this is a size 18 needle that you would use for jeans or denim. So we're going to start by holding our threads, dropping our needle, and I'm going to sew down once and back up making sure my needle is down and then I'm going to rotate it so I can go at a diagonal making sure my needle is down again turning it all the way around and going back and forth again on the sides so we get to the corner one more turn and then we've made a really nice X Now that we've got our X sewn, we're going to make the adjustable strap, add the D-ring, and sew the very last stitch. So what I do to make the strap adjustable is I take the side where the webbing is showing and I'm gonna have that on the inside so you don't see it. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna lay it down flat with that sticking up, and then I'm gonna take my tri-glide and we're gonna loop the webbing through here. So coming in from the back, going over this little bit, and then through here again. So up through the back, pull it through, down through the front, pull it through, just like that. Now we're going to go over to our tri-glide and do the same thing. We're going to come up from the back and then go right over through there. And now you can see the adjustable part of the strap. There's only one more step left and that's to connect everything together. Now you don't want to forget about the D-ring as that is very important. So we're going to slide that right on, let that fall for now, and then we're going to take this making sure that nothing is twisted, then it makes a nice circle, and we're going to put this through our um, clip. Now I usually once I know everything's laying right, unclip this as it's easier to put in the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that D-ring, slide it right back up so that it's going to sit right there, right next to my clip, turn it over, and then we're going to sew another X right here, which is going to trap the clip and the D-ring together. Don't forget to make sure that your D-ring is pushed right up against your clip and hold your threads up. Go. Back and forth, rotate your webbing, and back and forth again. This is a great way to make a dog collar. This is also how I make all my adjustable straps when I'm making bags or bras or anything. So this is actually just kind of a good 
thing to know how to do. Okay, there's our final X. And now our dog collar is actually done. And look how great that looks. It doesn't have to be a dog collar. It can be for a cat or any animal that you love. But there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this and are gonna make some fun fashions for your furry friends.